This episode is a product review with a twist. I've been sent the Top Don TC001 thermal camera to review. What's the twist I hear you say? Well, I've written software that allows it to run on Linux and more specifically, the Raspberry Pi. I was contacted by a manufacturer to review their Top Don TC001 thermal camera. As always on this channel, I'm happy to review products if they fit in with the overall theme of the content of my channel. But anyway, let's take a look. So this is a thermal imaging camera that you can connect to your mobile phone. Uh, we'll take a look at the specifications on the back of the package in here. It says it has a 256 by 192 high resolution IR camera. Uh, that looks like a pretty decent resolution to me. Uh, we've got a real time temperature waveform compatible with Windows and Android. Uh, I specifically requested the Android version of this uh, they do a version for Apple products, but I don't own one. Uh, we've got a temperature abnormality alarm, uh, usable temperature range from minus 20 degrees C to plus 550 degrees C, so a, a very reasonable temperature range. And it says it has customizable imaging optimization. So we'll take a look and see what's actually in the box. Packaging is really quite nice. Sort of a shame to throw it out. We've got a hard case here, presumably with the thermal camera in it. And we've got the usual instructions and these look very brief. Yeah, so it's just a case of go to top down and download the software for the PC if that's what you want to run it on. And then go to Google Play Store and download the software for your phone. Inside of the case, we've got the camera itself. There it is. Oh, very, very nice. Feels like uh, aluminium case. Uh, we've got what appears to be a germanium lens there uh, that'll pass the long wave infrared. We've got a USB-C connector. I'm quite, uh, getting quite fond of USB-C. It's a, a definite improvement on what came before. Some branding on the back there. Very nice. Uh, really nice compact unit. Uh, we've also got a cable. Uh, so there's a USB-C cable here so you can connect it up to your PC. And we've got a lens cloth. Although, as always with lenses, um, try not to get them dirty in the first place. So I have the thermal camera attached to a mobile phone. Every now and again, you can hear this thing click. And from what I've read, I think that's some self calibration feature that it does. Uh, we'll click on thermal imaging and take our first look. Very, very nice indeed. This is actually a very, very clear image and I can clearly make out the features on my own face. Um, fantastic, beautiful. Uh, I think rather than holding a mobile phone up in front of the camera, I think it would be a good idea to record directly off of the phone and we'll have a look at some stuff and see how this thing performs. So we'll just have a quick look around the place and see what we can see. The resolution on this is actually really, really very nice indeed. You can actually work out what things are in the background uh, without having to have an overlay. So there's the tripod, there's my chair. Uh, we've got a set of shelves over there, although they're quite difficult to see, admittedly. Um, we'll have a look at the workbench. There's the camera I was using to video the first half of the video sitting at 28 degrees, which is possibly about right. Seems a little warm, um, but there it is. Uh, I've got a soldering iron on the, on the bench here as well. Look at that, fantastic. Now this is reading a little low at about 200 degrees C, but if I press the high temperature button, presumably it rescales the range. That's a little bit more like it. So we're 304. 304 odd degrees. The actual HACO controller says 350, but yeah, so if we get right up close to the camera, it's, it's detecting a more reasonable temperature. Um, very, very nice. So I'm in my kitchen just now, and I thought I would show you this. I've just boiled a kettle full of water, and you can actually see the heat coming out of the mains cable. So clearly the mains cable is warming up while the, uh, while the water boils. But I wanted to show you this. I've got a saucepan down here uh, full of cold water. We'll pour some of this boiling water into it. Look at this. This is absolutely fantastic. Wow, you can actually see the currents in the water. Very, very nice. I've noticed that the image pauses whenever the camera clicks. So obviously there's no data coming from the camera at that point. I'll just turn on a hob on the stove. Awesome. Look at that, you can actually see the heating element through the ceramic. Very, very nice. I'm walking around in the kitchen here in my bare feet and you can actually see my footprints on the floor if I just step back. 
there they are. Interesting that there's a color palette on here as well, so you can cycle through the color palette. And uh, black and white actually is quite contrasty, that's nice. Now obviously, apart from amusing myself with hot and cold things around the house, uh, you can actually use thermal cameras for serious purposes. I've got a Raspberry Pi here and we'll just plug it in and see what happens. I'm going to do this one-handed. And we can see the chip heating up on the board there. Look at that. Very, very nice. Oh, even the SD card's getting kind of warm at the end there. So I suppose if something was seriously overheating on a board like this, you would just be able to spot it right away. It has to be said, I'm really quite pleased with how well this performs. I mean, this will make a really, really useful tool that's probably going to feature in some future videos, I would imagine. You know, if you're messing around with uh, high-power lasers and electronics and things like that, um, I think this is going to be one of those tools which eventually just becomes indispensable and you couldn't imagine your life without it. Very, very nice. Before I get on to software for the Raspberry Pi, I thought it'd be worth taking a look at the Windows software for this. So I've downloaded and installed the software and I've attached the thermal camera to the laptop with the supplied cable. Currently, we're looking at the thermal image from the camera and we can quite clearly make out my laptop there. Excellent. Down at the bottom, we have a nice little graph which shows the minimum and maximum temperatures of the scene. So currently it says that the max is 35.2 and the minimum is 21.1. If you want to measure arbitrary points in the scene, there's a little tool up the top there. I can just click on it and drop a point and I can measure the surface of my laptop at 30 odd degrees. If I click down here where there isn't anything much, about 20 odd degrees. Very, very nice. There are some color maps in here as well. So depending on what it is that you want to look at, uh, you might find that some color maps are more contrasty or you, know, you get a better view than others. Uh, so for example, if I click on black and white, uh, we can see we get a very, very contrasty black and white image. Let's delete those points. Uh, we'll have a look through some of the other color maps. I mean, there's hundreds of color maps in here. Some are better than others. That's kind of nice, kind of uh, Predator-esque, right? Very, very nice. It has to be said, I much rather prefer the mobile phone app than the desktop app in terms of you know ease of use. So it's very, very easy to scroll through color maps, uh, very, very easy to just measure temperatures and stuff. And uh, not so much on the laptop, you've got to start clicking through menus and all the rest of the things. Uh, but if you wanted to debug PCBs, for example, identifying hotspots or whatever else have you, you know, you could mount the thermal camera above your workbench, fire up the Windows software and be able to do some reasonable measurements, which is very, very nice. As I promised at the beginning of the video, I've written Python software for this thermal camera so that you can use it on Linux and more specifically the Raspberry Pi. So let's have a look. So the repo is called PyThermal Camera because I'm not very creative with titles. This is all released under the Apache 2.0 license, which means that you're free to do with the software whatever you wish, so long as you credit the original author. We'll just take a look at the intro real quick. Before I start, huge props to Leo DJ over on the EV blog forum for working out how similar thermal cameras actually present their thermal data. It turns out it actually comes out as a video feed where the second half of the frame contains the raw encoded temperature data. Um, excellent. I will link in the EV blog forum to, to this actual thread down below because you know presumably this will help other people get their thermal cameras working on Linux or Raspberry Pis or whatever else have you. I'll also link in Leo's GitHub repository as well if you want to take a look. So along to the intro real quick, this is a quick and dirty Python implementation of thermal camera software for the top down TC001. It doesn't send any of the special commands to the camera itself, it just receives raw data, does some OpenCV magic with it and presents it in a usable way. As for the features I've implemented, I've tried to implement as many of the nice features from the app as possible, so here is a short list. Uh, the first thing I've done is bicubic interpolation of the image. Uh, the image is actually quite small, it's 256 by 192 pixels, and we can use some funky OpenCV math to increase the size of the image and, and give an impression of a higher resolution. It's actually quite nice to look at, um, so that's been included. The available scaling ranges are from 1 to 5. For Linux, full screen and windowed mode is implemented. It should be noted there's a slight bug in the OpenCV package that ships with the Raspberry Pi. So once you get into full screen windowed, you can't actually get it back out again without pressing quit, uh, which is a little bit irritating. Uh, false coloring of the image is provided and I've listed out all available color maps on the right hand side of the repo there. Um, out of all of these, I find that Jet, Hot and Bone are the most useful, but you've got choice. 
We've got variable contrast implemented, average scene temperature implemented, uh, center of the scene temperature monitoring with crosshairs. We've got floating maximum and minimum temperature values, um, as you see in the app. Uh, video recording is implemented. Uh, it saves as AVI files only. And we've got snapshot implemented, so you can just press a key and take a screenshot of the image. All of the current settings are displayed in a head-up display, a little box at the top left-hand side of the screen, which shows things like average temperature, how long the thing's been recorded for, and so on. As far as dependencies, only one is actually required for this, and that is the Python OpenCV library. To run this program, all that you need to know is the device number of the thermal camera when you plug it in, and then you're, you're good to go. It's a case of just run the program. The entire software is keyboard controlled. I resisted the temptation to go down the TK into route. Um, so yeah, you just get the, the thermal camera view and then everything else is controlled with the keyboard. I actually find this quite convenient rather than clicking and dragging and messing around with sliders. Let's have a quick first look at the software. The very first job is to list out the video devices on the system. Um, on the latest version of Raspberry Pi and Bullseye, this is all quite weird. There's like loads of video devices. Um, but yeah, if you list them out, there are two down at the bottom here that are of interest. The live cam is the thing that I'm doing to, using to do the recording just now. And then the USB camera is our actual thermal camera and it shows up as device number two. And so to run the software, we just pass it de type, type device two as the argument and it will pick that as the camera to use. So we'll just take our first look at the thermal camera on the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, the frame rate is pretty decent. Um, we've got the average scene temperature is 24 degrees. Um, I measure about 33 odd degrees. If I point it up at the ceiling, we can see that my LED light is actually running at 71 degrees. That's unreal. I thought these things were supposed to be energy efficient and it's pumping out watts of heat into the room. Um, anyway, there we go. Let's have a look at the Raspberry Pi. And we can see it's running at about 40 degrees, which seems fairly reasonable. Excellent. If I press the M key, we can cycle through the available color maps. So there's the hot color map. There's magma, inferno, plasma, bone, spring, autumn, viridis, perula, inverted rainbow, and then back to jet, uh, which is the default. Very cool. For this video, I put a test rig on the bench, which is basically a dummy load. And right away, spot the problem. It actually turns out that one of the cables that runs up to the power supply is actually faulty. It's hot all the way up and it shouldn't be. Uh, it should be just cool copper wire. So that's gonna need replaced. So already this thing is finding problems for me. Excellent. As with the rest of the color maps, you can vary the contrast on this thing, which might help you to pick out um, hot spots or cold spots. Um, very cool. This doesn't actually alter the temperature data at all. It just it just changes the way the data is presented to you in the screen. Just because why not? I've got some freezer spray here, so I'll spray it on the workbench. Very, very nice. All in all, the software is reasonable and it works. It could do with a little optimization to speed it up, and perhaps implement threading or something. Um, but as I've said before, this is all open source. So if you want to contribute to the repo or you want to make some suggestions in the comments down below, feel free. I'm really very pleased with the performance of this thermal camera and the ability to run it on the Raspberry Pi is an added bonus. I'll put a link in the description down below if you want to buy one of these things. They're available on Amazon at $279.99, which sounds expensive, but in the scheme of things for forward-looking infrared devices, this is actually really quite cheap. As always, I'll end this episode with a huge thank you to my Patreons, channel donators, and subscribers. I really appreciate your support.